Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to be looking at some UV or ultraviolet LEDs and seeing what they can do. I've purchased two sets, the first from an Amazon reseller and the second from an eBay reseller. So let's have a look at the specifications. The first set of LEDs came from an Amazon seller called Well Dash Goal. I paid £1.37 for 10. The size is 10 millimeters. The dominant wavelength is 400 to 405 nanometers. I'll come back to that in a little bit. The viewing angle is 30 degrees. The luminous intensity is 80 to 120 millicandelas. The DC forward current is 20 milliamps and the DC forward voltage is 3.2 to 3.4 volts. The second set of LEDs came from an eBay seller called Superquick. And in this case, I paid £1.29 for 10 5 millimeter LEDs. It says the dominant wavelength 390 to 395 nanometers, forward voltage 3.2 to 3.4 volts, and the forward current is 30 milliamps. Luminous intensity is greater than 2000 millicandelas. So that's uh, wildly different from the last set. Viewing angle is 20 to 25 degrees. When we were looking at the LED specifications, they both listed the wavelength of the LED. So I thought it would be useful to have a look at what that means. This is a diagram of the electromagnetic spectrum and it shows the wavelength in nanometers. Now a nanometer is a very small part of a meter. It's 0 0.0000000001 of a meter. This is the visible part of the light spectrum. So you've got your red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. This part is the infrared spectrum, and that's the ultraviolet spectrum. Infra actually means below, so it's below red, and ultra means beyond, so it's beyond violet. And they're talking about frequency rather than wavelength. The ultraviolet spectrum is split into different sections. You've got the UVC at the short wave end of the spectrum, UVB in the middle and UVA at the long wave end of the spectrum. The UV LEDs that I'm looking at all operate in the UVA part of the spectrum. So the UVA part of the spectrum operates from 315 to 400 nanometers and 400 nanometers is where it borders the visible part of the spectrum. And you'll see at that point you've got violet and that's where you'll see a lot of the LEDs that are advertised are advertised as UV stroke purple or UV stroke violet. The first set of LEDs that I purchased from the Amazon reseller are 400 to 405 nanometers. So they're just about there on the border between the ultraviolet and visible light spectrum. The second set of LEDs from the eBay reseller are 390 to 395 nanometers. So they're just a little bit under the border between the ultraviolet and visible light spectrum. So it'll be interesting to see what difference that makes. So now let's look at how to connect the LEDs into a circuit. So the LED has a long lead and a short lead. The long lead is the anode and the short lead is the cathode. Also on some LEDs you'll see there's a flat side when you're looking above and that's the cathode. So the circuit symbol for the LED looks like this. And current has to flow in the direction of the arrow in order for the LED to light up. Now again, this side is the anode, and this side is the cathode. So for current to flow in the direction of the arrow, if you're connecting it to a voltage source, you need to connect the positive to the anode and the negative to the cathode. This is a simple circuit for lighting an LED. You have a battery, a resistor and an LED, all connected in series. This is a resistor, its value is measured in ohms and in this circuit dependent on the battery voltage and the LED. So first of all we need to know the battery voltage, which I'm going to call VBAT. And in this particular case I know it's going to be 12 volts. Then we need to know the forward voltage for the LED, which we will call VLED. The LEDs from Amazon were 3.2 to 3.4 volts, so let's call that 3.3 volts. Lastly, we need to know the forward current for the LED, which is 20 milliamps.
1 milliamp equals 0 0.001 of an amp. So 20 milliamps equals 0 0.02 of an amp. The value of the resistor is calculated from the formula R equals V battery V bat minus V LED divided by I LED. So this formula is basically just Ohm's law. It's basically the voltage across the resistor divided by the current flowing through the resistor. We found the voltage across the resistor by deducting the voltage across the LED from the voltage across the battery. So it's the V bat minus V LED. And then finding the current flowing through the resistor, which is exactly the same as the current flowing through the LED. So we divide it by I LED. So we put all these numbers into the actual formula. Basically we get 12 minus 3.3 .3 divided by 0 0.02 and that equals uh, 435 ohms. Resistors are available in what's known as preferred values so the two nearest preferred values are 390 ohms or 470 ohms. So what you'd do is you'd pick the, the next highest value, so that would be 470 ohms. So the other thing we need to think about is that the resistor is passing current and generating heat, and it needs to be able to dissipate that heat. So resistors come in a variety of different power ratings. So I've got two here. The first one is a quarter watt resistor, and the second is a one watt resistor. So the first can dissipate a quarter of watt of power, and the second one watt of power. So it's important to check that the power rating of the resistor is sufficient. And the way we do that is to use this formula, which is basically P equals I squared R. And the I is the current flowing through the resistor, and R is the value of the resistor. So we can just plug the numbers in that we've already got. So it's 0 0.02 squared times 470, which give us a value of 0.1881 watts. So you can see from that that a quarter watt resistor would be an appropriate size of resistor to dissipate that amount of heat. So we've made the circuit slightly more complicated now by adding multiple LEDs. So we've still got the battery with a voltage of 12 volts. We need to calculate the value of the resistor. The LEDs are each 3.3 volts and they have a current of 20 milliamps. Uh, we've got the term N, which just says how many LEDs we've got. So the formula for working out the value of the resistance equals the voltage of the battery minus the number of LEDs times the LED voltage, and all of that divided by the uh, LED current. So I just need to put these values into the formula to find the value of the resistance. So we've got 12 volts minus 3 LEDs times 3.3 volts divided by 0 0.02 amps. So that gives a value of 105 ohms. Well, the next highest preferred value is 120 ohms. So that's what we're going to use. To check the power rating of the resistor, I can use the same formula that I used in the single LED circuit. And we just bang the numbers in and it gives a value of 0 0.048 watts. So a 1 8 watt resistor would be absolutely fine for that. The color code for 120 ohm resistor is going to depend on the number of bands on the resistor. If you've got the three bands, then you've got brown, red, brown. That fourth one there is the tolerance. If you've got four bands here, then it's going to be brown, red, black, black. And again, that's the tolerance. To wire up the circuit, I've used a chop block. There's the three LEDs from Amazon. There's the resistor. This is the positive lead from the power supply or the battery. And this is the negative lead. And this is just a little wire link. Now, the left hand lead is the anode. So that's the long lead and the right hand lead is the cathode or the short lead and that's the same with each of the LEDs. So let's connect the battery and check that it works and the LEDs have come on. To make the connections with the smaller five millimeter LEDs I'm going to use these things they're called WAGO connectors and they come in uh, different sizes there's a two-way, three-way and a five-way. It's the 222 series I think this is the 412, the 413 and the 415 and the way that these work is all of these connections are connected together. You just pull the lever up, insert the wire you want to connect, and then you basically flip the lever down. That makes the connection. They've got a quite handy feature on the back, which is a stripping guide. So that there 
is the uh, distance of the, you need to strip off the insulation. So it's quite a good little uh, connector. So I've got three LEDs, the 120 ohm resistor, some two-way WAGO connectors, and the power lead from the battery. So first of all, I'm going to connect the anode or the, the long lead into one of these connectors. Flick that down. And I'm going to get another connector and do the other lead. And then with the same orientation, I have to do the same thing. Again, long lead or the anode to the left. And I'm just going to connect the resistor as well. I'm just going to bend those leads over. Missed that one. Now the power just goes, the negative goes into the right, and the positive goes into the left. So slightly different way of doing it. So I'm just going to connect the battery and check that all three light up. And they do. So to check the current flowing in the circuit, you can either use an ammeter or the other thing that I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a one ohm resistor in series with the circuit. I'm going to remove this link and I'm going to put in the one ohm resistor in there. And the voltage that I measure across there will actually be the uh, current that's flowing in the circuit. So let's just check that works again, which it does, and see what uh, the voltage is across this one ohm resistor. So it's 18.8. That says 18.8 millivolts, which equates to 18.8 milliamps. So I measured the current with the uh, eBay LEDs and that came to 17.5 milliamps. So I've got both sets of LEDs wired up now. They're both to the same power supply. Um, you can't really see an awful lot of difference between them. I've got a little bit of paper here. I might show you the, uh, give you an idea of the beam width. This is obviously the visible beam width, which might be different from the uh, UV beam width. But uh, you can see the, the smaller 5 millimeter LEDs of a quite a, much narrower beam width um, there's not much in terms of brightness certainly not in the visible light anyway so this is the LEDs shining through some olive oil it does fluoresce a bit and you can see the much smaller beam width of the five millimeter LEDs overall I'd recommend the larger 10 millimeter LEDs from Amazon as they're a little bit brighter and they've got a larger beam width these are some of the other items that I find laying around the house that glow brightly. This is water dyed with a fluorescent marker. This is the airlock from some homebrew wine. Cleaning fluid. Fluorescent and luminous t-shirt paint. And finally, some acrylic sheet. So thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you next time.